Hello and welcome to episode number 176 of Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. I'm Patricia Steer. My guest goes by the uh, YouTube channel name Authentic Intent. His name is Joshua Swift and he's from Mound, Minnesota, where he joins us from his yard. <laughs> Joshua, thank you for being here. Hey, thanks so much, Patricia, for having me on. It's uh, really an honor and a, a humbling experience, very much so. Flat Earth for all of us has been a humbling experience. We first realized we didn't know anything about the model we supposedly lived inside or lived on. And uh, now we've learned that all that was wrong. And <laughs> now we've learned that most of the people that we speak to think we're nuts. And that's where you come in. You've done some amazing videos. Many of us just sit behind microphones and, and talk and interview people. Some of us do experiments, but you've hit the streets, the parks, the beaches, and you spoke to people who have most of the time no idea that this whole flat earth thing is happening. And you've had some very interesting responses. What gave you the idea to do that as the way you were going to run your channel? Oh, gosh. Um, I felt like I took in over this last winter and the winter before um, when I really started to get on this you know, bandwagon, if you will. And I felt that with my past, I, I worked in sales. I went door to door in about 2002 for a year selling Papa John coupon books, you know? So I'd approach somebody's door and I'd try to hit them up on, if you buy this coupon book, it's 25 bucks, but you get two free pizzas right away. And after that, if you plan on buying any more pizzas at Papa John's or any place else, if you get it from Papa John's, they're two pizzas for the price of one. So it's just buy one, get ones afterwards. And there was a commission gig. So each coupon book I sold, I got 10 bucks. And being able to really get myself out of my shell and experience interactions with people on a personal level, uh, I was also informed and uh, through that experience found that that is the best way to advertise is to get in the face of somebody because they're always going to remember that. A lot of people, get a summary of the best uh, Super Bowl commercials, you know, and whatnot. And those are great and fun, but how much do you really remember something when somebody comes up to you and said, hey, did you know that the earth might be flat instead of a ball like we're taught in school? And I did some sales selling the Xbox Connect when that came out and that premiered in the local electronic store, Best Buy. And I did the dance game. So I'm sure a lot of people have played just dance or the Michael Jackson game and all those other dance uh, exercise games with the cameras for the new consoles. Well, I was selling those in the store and I'd, you know, convince people to come, Hey, you know, come dance with me. And if you beat me, I'll give you a free game, you know, or something like that, or, or three months of Xbox live. And so that helped me with the crowd management too, you know, just being able to have 15 or 20 people watching me and this other person. And I'm getting this other person who is probably super shy, would never stand up in front of a class of 15 people and do a presentation. And I'm trying to get them to dance to beat it by Michael Jackson. And gosh, and just experiences through life and my, my true, true desire to help people in any way I can. And if I see somebody in need and in a situation of their life where I feel like I can just offer a helping hand or offer my own personal input of encouragement, I think that that is what this community really needs. It needs overall encouragement for everybody. Um, and I'm, I'm really encouraged by the response that I have gotten. And so it just, I felt like with all the knowledge that I had, I might as well take all the stuff that I learned in my past and wing it, <laughs> really. And on April 22nd, I went to the March for Science that Bill Nye was kind of the mascot for down in my state capitol. And I just re-uploaded that a couple of weeks ago, probably like a week ago. And that was my you know debut. And I was so excited about the interactions that I had because I found out I only have to be so smart to challenge what a person's thinking in their education and get them to investigate on their own time. 
Let's find out a little bit more about you. I know that you taught English in Thailand. That's unusual. Most people don't have that experience, aside from your Best Buy and Papa John's experience, very American things, but yeah. you were living in Thailand. How did you end up there and how did that go for you? And has any of that, speaking to young people, uh, talking to them about English in their native language, how that's a kind of similar to what you're doing now because people think flat earth is a whole different language. Yeah, it really is. And it's very foreign to them because it would never cross their mind. And Thai people are very Minnesotan. They have, they're always smiling. They're always really just not a care in the world. Uh, the other side of that coin is, is to be, to be that, it, in that, that passive can be detrimental because then you're allowing things that shouldn't be. But um, in 2014, um, I was just being really challenged about what my purpose was. Like, I, I wanted to get out of um, what I was doing. I had direct TV. I had a 60-inch uh, LG 3D TV, surround sound, video games, computer. I was bored with all that, um, watching sports all the time. And so I just started to really, really think very hard about what it is that I could do that is productive. And at a church that I went to here down the road, a guy did a testimony about a month that he spent in Thailand teaching English. And I, it just hit me. I was just like, wow, that's a really cool experience. I don't have a passport though. How am I going to do this? And I didn't think about the negatives. I thought about just what if, you know, hey, maybe. And I was the only one that talked to him. I got some information about the trip from the pastor and the missions trip and everything. And six months later, or six weeks later after that in 2014 of October, I got my passport and the money funded to fly me there for one month in October of 2014. And I came back with an unbelievable experience I couldn't believe how friendly my students were, how willing they were uh, wanting to learn. And they were very humble and they're so respectful to, to teachers. And that was, I was very not accustomed to that because it seems like the kids nowadays in schools uh, kind of have that, you know, herd mentality where if they don't really feel like they need to be there. They're just there because they have to be. They're not there to learn. But I had people that wanted to learn, you know, I had people of all ages from 14 all the way up to like 67 trying to learn English. And I came back and I wanted to go back again for a longer extended stay. And I saved up enough money and a trip again. This was all paid for. I probably brought like $500 of my own stuff, but I got rid of my TV. I got rid of my direct TV. I got rid of most of my games. I got rid of clothing that I didn't wear. And I just got rid of everything just to kind of let go of all the stuff that was, I felt holding me back. And I went to Thailand in 2015 from January until August. And I guess that kind of like, as I mean, if the most recent time I was at the lake, I, I went back there and I had a bunch of kids say, hey, Flat Earth guy, come on, we want to talk to you again. We got some questions. And so eventually I had, you know, eight, eight kids kind of just hanging out. And because of my crowd control thing with Best Buy and my teaching, um, I'm able, I guess, uh, humbly able to project a teaching uh, environment. But I also listen to them and I, and I really encourage them because I'm not any smarter than them. I'm just a guy. And I've just, being in Southeast Asia was probably the best thing that I could have ever done. And to come back a couple months later and then to run across Eric Dubay's 200 Proofs video, I was like, wow, like I was just there. Like mm -hmm. it was very awestruck at the time. So your YouTube channel name, Authentic Intent, so much describes what you've just shown us here during this interview. You have an authentic intent and you can see it. There's nothing disingenuous about you. You seem very pure of heart, pure of spirit. 
And it really shows when you're out there trying to help people and giving them just a couple of questions about the reality they think they live in and letting them um, maybe think about it a little bit with you right there. Some of the responses have been amazing and some of them have been a bit abrupt. And I haven't watched every single second of every one of your videos, but enough to see that a lot of young people are quite open and a lot of older people seem to just pretty much want to say, in other words, shut up, kid, you're bothering me, get off my grass, go away. <laughs> is that true? Is it, yeah. is it older people? Is it, can you say it's older people that aren't as interested and younger that are more, or, or am I wrong? Uh, well, I have seen every episode of Authentic Intent. Um, so, <laughs> um, you've not only seen it, you've <laughs> starred in it. <laughs> um, gosh, you know, I, I would say the young, young kids, like, uh, before you graduate high school are really into it. Like at first you're like, that is, you're a crazy old man. Like, it doesn't exist. And then that's when the parents get upset. But, um, and then kind of like high school up until like, mid to late 20s i would say is definitely like the most brainwashed to put mm. it bluntly, you know? everybody wants um, i remember we all remember high school everyone thought they were individuals but wanted to dress like everybody else and you had a fear if you weren't wearing whatever everyone else was wearing that you'd be laughed at you had to you had to think like everyone else thought it really is high school should just be called brainwashing school yeah yeah and so, yeah, they graduate high school and, or college and they think that they know it all, but who doesn't, right? Um, and so I would say the older generation is definitely more hardwired into this reality. And I think that's, um, in my opinion, that's okay um, because they're the ones that per 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 perpetrated this continual lie of, you know, Santa Claus, Easter Bunny, Tooth Fairy, and all these other things that may sound minor and not that big of a deal, but it is instilling that idea of being lied to. It's um, okay even, to lie to children. I, yeah. 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 And so uh, I, I, yeah, I would say that the younger kids are more open to it, the, you know, but then I, I, that's why I love going to the University of Minnesota is because that is where I can really challenge what they're being taught because most of the kids are paying for what they're being educated from and to threaten that, you know, majority of what they're being taught might not be true. It, it does challenge their, their whole worldview. And I, I think that is where I want to be most effective and that's where I want to talk to kids. I can't wait. Um, school starting up. There's I'm already seeing orientation signs when I was driving by the university on Saturday. And I, I kind of just let the old people just go because they're going to believe what they want to believe. All I can do is maybe offer them my card that has various, uh, you know, websites and videos for them to check out. But I really want to get the, the kids because those are the kids that are the next generation. Mm -hmm. And I want to, I want them to wake up. But of course, I mean, I'm older and there are people in Flat Earth, believe it or not, even older than me who, who woke yeah. up to this, you know, major uh, deception. The biggest one, I believe, and the most horrible one that has ever been perpetrated on mankind. I mean, this is, mm -hmm. this is beyond disgusting what they've done to us. But what we have to do is not sit around crying over it and instead turn that, that anger into action. And well, here you are. That's exactly what you're doing. There have been some people who've made some comments, some negative comments about what you're doing. And of course, no matter what any of us do, we will face criticism because there are people who aren't really that encouraging. They want to make you do flat earth the way they would do flat earth. Meanwhile, well, they're not some of the time anyway, doing anything except yelling at you for doing it wrong. Some people who were saying that you shouldn't talk to young people, and this was at a, a beach, I think, because that leads to pedophilia. I was astounded when I heard those accusations. I watched those interviews. There's nothing involving pedophilia. There was nothing sexual about those interactions. Um, so we're not allowed to talk to young people because then you're a pedophile. I mean, that is just too far. I think that's people 
looking for a reason to find something wrong with what you're doing. And they're going to have to make something up because there's nothing wrong with what you're doing. Have you heard those accusations? And if so, what do you think about them? Well, I go by the motto and it's been a long walk. Uh, if you're, if you're not being ridiculed or criticized by somebody, you're not doing something right, you know? And so, yeah, a lot of people do feel like they could do better than me. Um, and I encourage them to show me their live stuff, you know, unrehearse when they go out and show me different ways to interact with the public. And I haven't seen any of those. And the people that I have seen do it, they have done it because not it's not me. It's it's their own desire to want to do it. And some people just need to be pushed, you know. But I don't want to swim. I don't want to know. I don't want to jump in the deep end. I'm scared. And then that's when you just, you know, you got the kid here at the edge of the pool and, you know, and he's whining, whining, and you just turn around and you just push him. <laughs> oh, no. You know? You're going to catch, <laughs> catch some flag for that one. <laughs> yeah. Child abuse. Well, right, exactly. <laughs> But I mean, some people want to do what I'm doing, but they just, they don't have just the wherewithal to be able to do it. And there are a couple of guys who are doing live stuff more frequently recently mm -hmm. and they have done it and they've commented because, Hey, you know, you just encouraged me to do it. Or now I'm talking to coworkers or now I'm talking to family. I'm just, you know, more open to wanting to share this. I just appreciate what you're doing. Thanks a lot. You know? And so, um, the whole, the whole kids thing is a sensitive subject for them. My mind doesn't go there. Like yeah. that's the last thing that's on my mind. Um, right. For them to have those comments, they should probably seek help and they should probably um, talk to somebody if they feel like they're going to stumble to such an environment. Cause that's not me. That's not my problem. And if I was allowed to come into a public school and have like a 10 page, uh, you know, quick little reader's digest summary of the top five proofs or observations or like, yeah, why is like a lighthouse viewed from 42 miles away? That's really bizarre. Like it should be over the curve. I would totally be on board with that. But we as a community, we're not allowed to teach such, you know, heresy in church, I mean, school. And so, I just go to where people are. And if kids just so happen to be there, kids just so happen to be there. If they happen to be awestruck by such an audacious comment as the earth being flat and not a sphere, like we're told, like they're being told in six months from now and they were told a year ago and so on and so on. So I, I think it's also to do with, hey, if you do what he's doing, we're going to come after you. Mm -hmm. So it's not just me. It's also for the people that are ahead of me um, who feel like, okay, I've seen what he does. I don't like what he does here, but this is what I'll do. And so the, those people who are behind closed doors right now, they might go out and do better than me, which I want. I mean, wouldn't that be fun to have a little friendly competition of people, you know, not one upping each other, but just going out and sharing their ideas. Hey, this is how I want to do it. I want to set up a lemonade stand and have people come to me and be just a little more, you know, passive aggressive and allow that. Or, you know, do what I do and just hold a sign that's provocative and invite people in. And so I, I really don't watch a lot of the negative stuff, to be honest with you. Um, I do allow some negative posts to go through. Um, but I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to allow your negative comment to be a platform on my channel because there's just no, there's no fruit in that. There's nothing that anybody is going to gain from that. I um, agree so much so, with what you're saying. I agree completely. Um, yeah. But of course, there are negative comments that can be constructive and um, yes. we can learn from them. I have heard somebody say, since you mentioned the lemonade stand, that, uh, oh, he would be better off if he'd set up a stand and had people come to him as opposed to he going to them. Well, that's another thing. Will those people come to you? I mean, the, right. you're doing something that is proactive. And if somebody doesn't want to talk to you, they simply say, and I've heard them say, no, sorry, pal, I'm busy, or yeah, no, gotta go. And they, they move on. You're not chasing them down or screaming at them. <laughs> yeah. So uh, it is, um, 
just like you're asking them for the time. Hey, do you know what time it is? It's kind of like that. It's a simple interaction that they can just have a quick response and then move on with their life, or they can sit there and engage with you. I think what you're doing is amazing. It's tremendous. And I've not done it myself. I'll be the first to admit that I have not gone into groups of total strangers and tried to talk flat earth, earth with them. Now I've done it among my family and friend groups, and I've done it um, on an airplane with someone sitting next to me. They're a captive sure. audience. They can't go anywhere anyway. Right, yeah. <laughs> it's kind right. of easy. Uh, yeah. okay. One time I did it, I was looking at a video sitting down in a restaurant with a friend, and I was looking at a flat earth video, and they said, what are you looking at? I said, flat earth, and I tried speaking with them and they were interested. I wrote down some key videos and gave those videos to that person. And then eventually that person messaged me on Facebook uh, and said that they wanted me to add them as a friend and they had looked into Flat Earth. So yeah. you, you just never know when a small little interaction will create yet another person who is here right there with us spreading the Flat Earth truth. So yeah, what you're doing is uh, it's, it's doing a lot. There are so many other things that are, that are doing a lot out there. Um, yeah. so many people are having their, their various methods of getting the word out. Um, I know that we've got billboards going up. We've got a sort of flat earth newspaper going on. We've got a flat earth art show. There's been flat earth spoken word poetry, lots of flat earth music, t-shirts and other things for sale. There have been books, uh, that have been read. There have been, or excuse me, written and then read and, um, continual videos coming out with with proofs uh, and and people say we don't need more proof videos yeah we do and here's why there's new people coming into this every single moment and they might look through videos that came out today and if there's no proof video today then they might look away of course there's those videos that have been out for a very long time that are fantastic and there's channels that are fantastic but when you're new you don't know who to look at or where not to look I say look at everything but uh, yeah I think what you're doing is um, part of this, this wheel that we're making, uh, not to say you're a cog in a wheel. We're all cogs in the wheel though. We need the cogs. We need, we need people who are actively involved in supporting the bigger picture here so we can continue to go forward. So, uh, I, I really, I really, I really enjoy watching what you're doing. Um, you mentioned earlier about a business card that you have with lots of good videos listed and such. Uh, yeah. did you make that card yourself and what videos, what do you have on it? I did not make the card myself. I got emailed by a channel called Project Eli. Mm -hmm. Okay, so check her out. And her name is Robin. And I've been on her show a couple of times. And her and I just kind of hit it off. You know, I mean, like, we enjoy each other's company. We don't agree on everything. Um, but she emailed me and said, hey, you know, I know you're handed out, like, pieces of paper. I'd love to get you some business cards. Like, what do you want on them? How do you want it to look? And so on. And I said, Hey, that is awesome. And I, I am so I'm humbled. Like, that's all I could say is just like, wow. Like I just bowed my head and I was like, thank you. And I said, it is totally up to you. What you want to put on it. It's up, you know, your discretion. Um, I want you to, to make it the way that you want it to look. And I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll most likely approve of it. And it has, um, Eric DeBay's 200 Proofs, Good. Flat Earth Clues, Director's Cut, ODD TV Flat Earth Trilogy. And there it is. Love how that looks. Yeah, it's really fun. Ridicule before investigation is the height of ignorance at the bottom of that card. Wow. Yeah. She did a great yeah. job. She did. Yeah, I, I say that pretty often. I said it a couple of times. Uh, at the soccer game on Saturday and I just I'm just handing them out like candy at a candy store you know hey say try a sample hey try a sample and and when people say well what's your source okay well here's I'll just hand you the card <laughs> you know mm -hmm. and then and then they can go from there and I I felt um you know with the you know back to the lem you know lemonade stand have people come to you type of deal I kind of did that in my first six or seven episodes i have a, a actual card or a, a youtube video that says gta and the reason why i put the gta term of grand theft auto is because everybody is seeing what i'm doing through the camera's eyes and i'm just standing there and when the game goes idle for like five minutes or something like that the camera will just pan on to somebody moving by or a car driving by or something like that and i'm just standing there and i was holding a sign 
and I was in College Town, Minnesota, and people would come by me. They would see the sign or whatever, and I, I wouldn't approach them at all. I, I, I guess you could say I was kind of nervous. I was mm -hmm. like, I don't want to like set the vibe in my own city of ah, I'm aggressive, flat earth, you know. I, I really wanted to kind of just be cool and just let it all come. And as I progressed, I did start to gain more confidence because I thought it was very important. And soon I thought like, wow, I'm leaving these people with not a lot of information. Now they got to remember it, you know? And I made the the little uh, clip cards from an eight by 11 printer paper, right? And I cut those out and I thought of the videos and stuff. And so I started handing those out and Robin emailed me uh, last week and bada bing, bada boom. Here That's we are. Cool. Yeah. Uh, Robin's channel is Project Eli. That's E period L period I. I'm a subscriber, so so check her out. Uh, I think it's wonderful that she helped you. There's so many people that are helping each other. I know that uh, Nicole Cote has made some signs, some banners, and other things for people. Uh, people just, uh, if you have a need and you express it in the community, there are people there that are not wanting to go out there on the street themselves, but they will help you. And um, people are saying things naysayers again i have to address it though that sure. flat earth is all about money making that you are here to make money and i'm here and all of the people that we know are here to make money um i know what i always say to that is if i w wanted to make money flat earth would be the very last thing i'd ever pick because you you were yeah. just berated and called a moron and the amount of money that you can make is very very small if any at all but what do you say to that whole making money thing i'm sure you've had people say oh you've got a You've got to go fund me for new equipment for doing better videos. Oh, Ooh, yeah. you're in it for the money. Right. Yeah. Um, the nine year old computer that I'm using is, uh, uh, you know, top of the line. You know, I mean, it <laughs> takes me almost four, four times as long to just do projects that I'm trying to provide information to, to newcomers onto Flat Earth that I hand out my card to people and I want to give them high quality stuff. This is a first world country and we have first world problems. I was out at the X Games on Saturday and my video was choppy because everybody was on the same tower. And I couldn't do a live stream after 15 minutes because everybody was complaining, ah, I'm leaving because of this pixelation, buffering, blah, blah, blah. Well, wax on and wax off. And I had to stop because first world problem people were coming at me that it wasn't 4k resolution on their phone or their computer screen and just so simple stuff like that and then and then editing the videos and then giving it people a best of when i try to save videos from youtube onto my phone and then re-upload them onto youtube it takes over 26 hours for the editing to save onto my computer and it doesn't save properly and then it takes more time for it to re-upload onto YouTube. And that's just the problem with the computer. And so render onto Caesar what is his, is basically what I say. Money is a tool and a resource that all of us use, whether it be you go buy Culver's here down the road, fast food, or you buy you know your almond milk. Either way, you're giving your money to somebody and your your votes don't count in terms of the politics in this country, but they do very much count when you're buying products. And that's what you're voicing your opinion on. So if people feel compelled and led to offer me money for doing what I'm doing because they themselves can't do a particular thing themselves, then who are you to say that they can't and where they can and can't spend their money? And we're all part of a body here in this community. You know, a person wants to be an ear, but they're not meant to be an ear. They have to be a toe, you know, and another person's an eye, but they want to be a nose. So we all have our particular roles to play in this community and to bash somebody for offering an opportunity for somebody to receive money i just don't I, I don't agree with that and i actually had to make an apology youtube video um when i started to do this more um and i felt more compelled to do these because i did have that same mentality and until you walk in somebody's shoes who is a youtube content creator 
you don't really realize how much time and passion and miss sleep and all these other things that kind of can go along with that and snowball in addition to working my part-time job. And so, yeah, if somebody wants to pay me five or 10 bucks for the gas that took to, to go to my location and back, I, I will offer them the opportunity to, you know, give, you know, from their heart and give willingly, you know, everybody likes a cheerful giver, but I only did one video where I offered it and I said, Hey, this is where it is. I don't think I've asked or mentioned my donation. Uh, Channels I don't yet. think you have either, but I took the liberty of taking it uh, and putting it in the description box of this video so that Appreciate because you don't ask, I'm going to put it there so that people will know that if you've got an extra five bucks, uh, toss it Joshua's way. I mean, it, it, it will only help him become better at what he's doing. And he's doing, he's, he's the legs. I mean, I have legs, but he's our legs. He's out there on the street. There's other people like Dell from Beyond the Imaginary Curve in Scotland and yes. many other people who are doing what you're John doing. Smith. John Smith, yes, yes. And other people who, I mean, we may not know their names. I can't come up with them off the top of my head, but you know who you are that are out there doing that. And um, it, it's, not, it's not easy because I know how hard it is just to talk to people that you know, that, want, that are hanging out with you on purpose in your house. Yeah. talking to those people, let alone standing outside all day, trying to kick up a conversation with somebody. Do you ever find yourself at a loss for words when somebody asks you a question, not knowing the answer or mm, fumbling when it comes to something? Definitely. The number one question I have most difficulty with, they kind of tie into each other. Uh, why does it matter? Mm. Uh, and why would they lie to us? Like what, what benefit would they get for lying to us? I have offered so many different explanations between, you know, evolution lie, uh, globe lie, um, millions of billions of years, why it matters to me. I can't explain it. You have to experience it yourself. Um, why does somebody fall in love with somebody? And that's like an egregious comment to say for some people, but I mean, really like, why why would somebody fall in love with a particular thought and then live it out that means well why would they lie to us about what we see in the sky and then create this imagination of us living on a ball that had to have come from somewhere and a bunch of people had to have gotten together and agreed on okay let's do this how long is this going to take until we're able to completely control the masses probably 500 years and so there is the process of, of why they're lying to us. Do I know the answer ultimately? Clearly, I think a lot of us are coming to that conclusion who are in the flat earth community. And that's because they're hiding a creator. Whichever creator you want to side with, I feel like I wanna be on the front lines of helping to usher that in. So then we'll all know, you know, there'll be no more questions about you know, Bible, Quran, Buddhism, and so on and so on, we'll all know the answer, but I just hope that people know what the answer is, and then they'll be, we'll all be ready for the answer. And I think a lot of people get really, you know, I'll use the term butt hurt, you know, because I talk a lot, I talk to a lot of kids, and I feel like that terminology goes along with, you know, being butt hurt by, you know, millennials. I'm taking away their fantasy of space and space travel and the movies that they see and then it ultimately snowballs into the lies and the real deceptions of chemtrails vaccines cell phone towers and so on and to to threaten to take that away and take their sports away where if i never went to another baseball or football game it would be too soon because i don't care for that but that for me even two years ago before i went to thailand that's all I could think about. Like I was watching sports and hanging out with people who went to games and like when I had free time, that's what we did is, and, and if somebody took my ball away and said, you can't do this anymore, find something else to do. I'd be like, what am I going to do? So yeah. Mulling yeah, over, mulling over where you live wasn't one of the things on your agenda back then. <laughs> Now no, it's no. the number one thing. 
Right. Yeah. And, and to be able to use this as a conduit um, to get people out and thinking and observe where you live and not just assume that what you were taught and what you see on mainstream media is true, but to really challenge um, those who are in power and stay and, and just keep hearing that don't mind the man behind the curtain. But we got it. We just I, I, we keep, you know, baby stepping our way towards that curtain. And sooner or later, all of us as a community will unite together and pull the veil. Yeah, we need to rip that curtain down. Yeah. Do you find a lot of people when you bring up in a gentle fashion using the term the creator, so it's not to rile anyone up because they don't know the whole flat earth story yet. God, let's just say God. When you bring that up, do you find that you get people thinking, oh, crazy Christian alert and, and backing away from you? Yeah, definitely. Um, it's nothing new. Um, I found yeah, probably I even before a, flat earth. I mean, you yeah. talked about hearing about going to Thailand to teach English in church. So even back then you were part of a minority group. Yeah. Through the curriculum that I was at the school in Thailand, we shared Bible stories about Jesus Christ. So through that, we taught people how to learn English because over 98% of that country is Buddhist. And not only do they not have a sense of Christ is, they have no idea that there's a creator. And that was very challenging, but they were very open and respectful. Some didn't agree with it and some were challenged and looked into it. Um, yeah, I mean, the whole God thing, I try not, and I'm, I'm very much a Christian. I would never deny him. I love my relationship with him and I, I, I'm not perfect. Believe me, I am not anybody sh that should look up to. But you can, if you see my testimony, I hope that you see a glimpse of the spirit that is in me. And I hope that makes you curious. And I did not get into flat earth because of what the Bible may or may not say, depending upon a person's interpretation. Um, I have come to that conclusion that it does talk about the earth being flat and immovable and firm and motionless and the firmament and all that stuff, the moon and the sun just being lights in the sky, not objects that can be landed on or touched, if you will, as NASA says. Um, I, I found that out after I became a flat earther, <laughs> you know? So uh, I, I, don't, I feel very confident and comfortable with being able to say that because I can, I can go out and say, hey man, I mean, I do agree with what the Bible says about flat earth, but I, I'm not here to talk about that, dude. So if you want to talk about that, that's you. That's your problem. If you want to talk about me talking to kids and I'm a pedophile, that's you and that's your problem. You know, so I, I go at it with um, just kind of hit them, you know, use a Mark Sargent line, you know, come at them sideways and say, well, there are no atheists on flat earth. So um, just, you know, a little heads up that you might lead into some kind of separation of evolution, millions of billions of years and so on and dinosaurs. But I do feel um, that it is kind of a touchy subject, which is why um, I allow the people to bring it up before I do. That's a smart and, idea. Yeah, and, and I like I've said it to a lot of people that I have conversations with, I can talk about the Bible and interpretations of verses and so on and so on and get onto this like philosophy of what the Bible is or isn't. But I can also do the same thing with flat earth and scientism. So which way do you want to go with this? And a lot of people would rather talk about sciencey stuff because that just is, makes them, that just makes us feel more comfortable in this reality because that's what we're kind of grown up into more so is the scientism yes. aspect of where we come from and everything particularly because of what Hollywood and our educational system give us. And uh, yeah, so I just, I, I do want to just allow people to bring it up themselves. And if people in the chat don't agree with that, well, I don't agree with a lot of what you say either, man, but let's handle this and then let's move on. We, Cause this is a long road. Like this isn't even mainstream. We're still on the ground level. Like we are gaining a lot of momentum but we have a long ways to go. So we have to find a, some uh, common ground and compromise. 
Yeah, we're uh, still rolling that snowball up the hill. And then when we get to the top, it's like Atlas Shrugged. We let the ball go and it takes on a life of its own. But we're we're not there yet. But the ball yeah. is getting bigger, the snowball that is. Yeah, right. You know what you were saying about scientism? I think science in general, I'm talking about fake science, not real science. We all can do real science ourselves. Um, the scientific method is like a real thing and is not to be laughed at. That scientism, as we've learned about it in our school system, is put there so that we stop learning, so that we just take for granted all of the things they've told us and don't look into it, don't question it, just accept it. And I know I accepted all the aspects of the uh, heliocentric model and everything about planets. I think I remember learning about them in sixth grade and just, ooh, wow, Jupiter, ooh, you know, Mars, and just, just accepted it was true. And that's because we always accept the words of our elders. And um, it's a really, really, really big hole we're in that we've got to get out to wake people up. But I know if a um, very deep in the mainstream person like me can wake up, that anybody can wake up. Um, Being awake is not, uh, it's a process. I don't consider myself awake. I'm awakening every day. We learn something new. But uh, it's a process that we're all involved in. And uh, you, you learn from your mistakes. You learn from other people. What tips do you have for any of us who want to go do what you're doing? Maybe not in a big sort of video way like you're doing it, but let's say there's a family gathering coming up and you're going to be meeting uh, relatives that you don't know that well and maybe even their boyfriends, girlfriends, husbands, and wives. A big gathering for the summertime. It happens. You're going to go to one of these events. How do, you, how do we do what you do? What's a good opener? Um, I think it's best to find out what other conspiracy theories they're familiar with and kind of get an idea of of how they even feel about that. Um, You know, JFK assassination, you know, and I heard that some of those files are going to be released at the end of this month or the end of August, the JFK files or something. And whether those are blacked out or how many pages they give us and what they give us is up to all of our interpretation, I guess. But, moon landing um you know just the the basic stuff 9-11 uh that we would come across in terms of challenging the the official narrative of the stories that we've been given in the past and you can kind of feel it out from there and i think that if you challenge what we've been taught and you allow them to understand that you went to school here, you got an education and everything, that you've noticed just some indiscrepancies that have been going on recently or some things that make you feel uncomfortable, things that make you go, hmm, you know? (laughs) And I think that's a good start. Um, You will know the audience that you're talking to. I've, I've, you know, as Christian as I am and as new agey as this may sound, uh, I have done quite extensive watchings and research on vibration and frequency levels and lights and whatnot. And you just get a feeling for the types of people that you'll be able to interact with and you might not get along with. Right. It's, it's a, what they used to call in the 70s, vibes, bad vibes, yeah. good vibes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So... If you have a good vibe with a cousin or an aunt or your grandma, you know, and you can kind of like try, try do a trial and error with them, you know? So the, the relationships that you have the best relationships with, it's best to challenge those first because those are your more solid relationships. The ones where, you know, you have, uh, you know, uh, an uncle that you just really kind of bash heads with each other a little bit yeah it might be a little more challenging but it also might spark a conversation that could go on because you're bringing up something that he's thought about in the past and he might be the one that becomes a flat earther over the ones that you have the best relationship with That's in terms true. of family. If you have like this this mythical person you're you're speaking of and they, they are interested in other conspiracies they already have their head, you know, in the computer or in books. They're looking at things. And yeah, it might be something they, they could be interested in. But 
sometimes when people still believe we went to the moon, it can be hard. Sometimes if people don't uh, believe in chemtrails or believe that there is such a thing as that, um, like you were talking about GMO, um, but the media is doing everything they can to make us think that GMO is good and chemtrails are contrails and uh, they're, they're, you're pushing it down mainstream people's throats to the point where our voices are getting drowned out. All we can do is keep speaking louder and more frequently. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And like, uh, you know, whoever said it, whether it be Hitler or one of his commanders or something, you tell a lie over and over and over, louder and louder and louder, longer and longer and longer. You know, well, what happens? Eventually people start to believe it because that just becomes the norm. And that's why you have so many com commercials. You know, oh, I just saw this commercial like five minutes ago. Well, of course you did because they're paying for their advertisement. So they're trying to get people to come buy their stuff. And there's nothing wrong with that. But clearly we, even though those are those who are awake, see the quote advertisements for flat earth channels oh well they're just trying to make money so there still is some bitterness jealousy pride ego in the community that i feel like a lot of people um to grow if they shed that hate they'll be able to have more love towards other people and in my opinion that's love is unselfishness um it never seeks its own and it would never intentionally hurt somebody for their own benefit. And I think that there are some people in this community that whether they are paid for or not, um, do have a particular role in this community. And there's a good and a bad to it because it does help those like myself, like yourself and others to be like, wow, like this person isn't happy with what I'm doing. That means I have to fight much more stronger because we're all going to be who, those who are content creators who put our faces up on the screen are going to be held accountable because if a little comment, you know, makes me cry and I'm like, Oh, I can't take another negative comment. I'm going to shut down my YouTube channel for two months. Well, maybe you weren't meant to do this in the first place, you know, because if one little comment can drag you down, then what are you going to do when there are bigger, more noticeable people giving you negative comments? Because most of these negative comments, I've never met these people before in my life, you know, and who gives a rip? I don't know who they are. They could be just somebody who had a bad day and saw my video and blah, 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 type it up. And, you know, so, I mean, they drink too much Diet Mountain Dew and they're just like, ah, I can't believe you just said that the, there's no ball earth and I'm watching Star Trek, you know, right. like, <laughs> so. Diet Mountain Dew, that's pretty funny because that's yeah. got the highest caffeine level, I think of any soft drink. Plus of course yeah. it's GMO corn syrup and diet's got the aspartame in it. Basically right. you drink that, you die. <laughs> yeah, so. right. Uh, funny. A lot of people in the, uh, in the live chat of this show are here to support you. Uh, hey, we have got, Ranty Rantrat and Stephanie Griffin and AJ's and Good Times for All and Carly Sunshine, Musicians for Truth and The Hori Sheet Show and Nathan Oakley and Twitwit and Frank Bocciccio and whew, Flat Stuff Earth and Michael of Wake the Sheeple and uh, who else? Opening Pandora's Box, Dame Ethel Tripped With Me, Elspeth Awake, RJ Mojo, somebody naming Bill Hicks, Mr. Drobot is here too and uh, Anders Ace and Alex Aquarius, Nora No One's Flower, and Chris Topher, and many others. Chris Topher has a good comment about what we were talking about earlier about science, scientism. He says a consensus science is just a tool for control. Popular opinion is not actually reason. Yeah, that's pretty true. Um, unpopular opinion, though, that's flat earth, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. Uh, do you think in our lifetime, I know you're younger than me, but let's just put us all in the same basket for sure. the moment. Do you think in our lifetime that this will be known by all? Um, gosh, that's a good question because there are so many different ways that I feel the establishment can go with trying to trick those 
people do believe in the narrative of outer space and blue marble and stuff and aliens. Um, could they trick us into a Project Blue Beam fake alien invasion type of deal before Flat Earth gets out? Maybe. Could they use various uh, information about an Aryan race from the North Pole or Antarctica and say that they've always been here and the Earth is flat and, you know, now we all have to live in peace type of deal? I mean, sure. Um, I can't say 100% whether it's going to be the big disclosure while we're here, but I certainly want to be an uh, integral part in ushering in such a concept and idea to more and more people. Because I feel as people do just have that idea implanted into their head, like inception, if you will, I think it might take a couple of years for it to kind of build some steam. But that's where perseverance comes in. If we do these and we quit, a year later because you know it's not quote catching on i think that even those who are new to flat earth might think well this wasn't really a thing it's like zubas you know or the hula hoop and i think that our own personal perseverance of the first and second generation flat earthers here uh, we i think we will help determine whether or not it uh, a disclosure during our lifetime and i a hope that those who are new who may be watching this right now, I encourage you to hang on to this because it is the truth. It is something that we have been lied to and it leads you down so many other paths about how this reality is deceiving us and joy and the perceived freedom that we're given. We've got uh, Rand from Flat Out Elected who says, in five years, Flat Earth will no longer be an insane idea, but an interesting opinion held by many. And I see it like that. I've noticed much less trolling on everyone's videos. Believe it or not, at one point, there was a whole lot more than there is now. And I know that's hard to believe, but I've noticed there's much, much less of it, much less uh, negative videos happening pertaining to Flat Earthers being dumb. Um, they, they can't beat us because it's the truth. Some have joined us because it's the truth. Yeah. I, I think it's only getting better and better. So, yeah, I do too. I think that people in this community are embracing the new people. And I think that's really important. I think that name calling and to feel less of a person if they're new and they're genuinely seeking. I think we do need to be careful on, um, on that and we need to be more open and give more opportunity for people to make mistakes or ask the wrong questions and um, give people the benefit of the doubt. I mean, some people might be asking genuine questions or uh, not even know that they're trolling, you know, because they are so like, you know, like, do you really believe that? And um, as, as people in this community start to make more videos and the new people come in, you know, that's going to be, you know, the third and fourth generation of flat earthers on the ground for making a foundation. So if we want this movement, you know, if you will, or this uh, idea narrative to become, you know, more mainstream, we have to set a good example for those who um, call us crazy, you know, call us, you know, dumb or immature or uneducated. Right. Example, um, it will, uh, it'll, it'll uh, put hot coals in their lap, you know, cause they'll, they'll have to, they, what are you gonna do when somebody's smiling to you and say, have a good afternoon, ma'am. The earth is flat, not a ball. So drive safe. <laughs> So, you know, <laughs> oh, true. Uh, Arwen adds, it all depends to the question we were just discussing about, you know, is it going to, is it going to break in our lifetime? He says, it all depends on how much we can get the world to care about truth and the benefit of it. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing though. What is the benefit of the world? This is a devil's advocate question. What is the benefit of the world knowing the truth? that we don't live on a spinning ball careening through space is the benefit knowing 
who created it deeply on a, on a personal level is the benefit having the money that we're spending unwillingly really on NASA uh, ceasing and the money being used for better things? Is the benefit more land and more resources that might exist? Um, are those the benefits? The thing is, is that we want people to know about flat earth, but why do we want people to know about flat earth in your opinion? Yeah, I think flat earth is the idea that Ronald Reagan was talking about when he said, maybe if an alien race came from outer space, maybe that would draw everyone together as a human race, because then we would all be unified and see this great alien quote invasion and it would make us all push aside our petty differences for a time and unite as one, you know, human consciousness, if you will, or organism. And clearly, we all understand that aliens aren't real and there are no outer space invasions that are going to happen. And I think that flat Earth is the idea that he maybe had been talking about because this does unite us as human beings. Uh, black, white, you know, whether you're homosexual or straight, uh, educated or uneducated, young or old, we are still the human race. And we understand that not only is there a spiritual war going on in dimensions that we can't see, but there's a physical war going on and that makes money. So if there are problems, if there are wars, and if there's things that could cause division, those are the things that the establishment will put money into. And I think it would be great for everybody to just put aside all their petty differences for a while and just focus on truth because we are very much divided. Um, it's unfortunate that I saw and heard a shooting happen last night in downtown Minneapolis, where an Australian woman was shot in the back of her house. Well, coincidentally enough, those police officers, the police cars, cameras weren't going and their body cameras weren't going. Of course. So Russian vids, where you at? Come to my <laughs> town, we'll hang out and you could do a, a video about that going on right now. Cause apparently the passenger cop shot the unarmed Australian woman. Wow. So it's just little things like that that just they kind of salt and pepper various things like that to create a narrative that they're trying to give us. And if we can just continue to swim through the mucky water, we will find fresh water up ahead. So what you were saying about Ronald Reagan means we the flat earthers, we're the aliens. We are the invasion. Hey. <laughs> hey, hey, that might be. That's a good point. In a good way. In a very good yeah, way. Yeah, right, right. Um, I want to say hello to a couple other people who have come here, including in, uh, Infinite uh, Plain Society, Okadina Walker. And uh, a couple of people were saying that animal abuse has no place on flat earth. Uh, Fauquet is saying that. Others are agreeing. Four eyes to see is here. Um, also, we've got, uh, I think I mentioned Nicole Cote. I think I did. Gosh, I'm losing track of who I've mentioned. Uh, a bunch of other people. Paula, Knowledge Scavenger is here who says, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. And she says that's a, something Jesus has said, pretty much. Um, All is One Now is here as well. I really appreciate everyone being here. So many great comments happening. Sometimes I would wish I could look at all the comments and do the show at I the know. same time, but that would be like... Um, not possible for me. Some people are good at that, but I'm, I, I get too distracted and forget what I was talking about. I think you're providing flat earthers um, a lesson every time you go out there in how to carry yourself in public and how to speak to people who don't know anything about this. I think it's coming from your heart and I think it is indeed authentic intent, Joshua. I really think that you're amazing and if anybody has any problems with you then they have problems with themselves indeed yeah and i'd love to go back with um the meat the 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 cruelty to animals um definitely for you know meat purposes and hot dogs at you know sporting events and 
I had ush I had I, I felt like I kind of ushered away some uh, golden plump chicken hot dog people at Lake Harriet about three and a half hours in or so of that video and they were offering some free chicken hot dogs to try out and I am trying to steer my way <laughs> towards that idea and it was great to have the live chat and everything going on because they held me accountable to what I desired to do and if they weren't there, if I was just hanging out at the lake, I probably would have grabbed two of those chicken hot dogs and I wouldn't have gotten into a conversation about GMOs and antibiotics and how we do treat our animals here on earth. And I also have another thing that I don't want on my flat earth. I don't know if everybody can see this, um, but I'll zoom in. That's uh, my grocery store. Yes, and there's some cell towers there. And there is a cell phone tower immediately above the to the grocery store. Right, and it's irradiating all the food inside. And <laughs> right. How crazy yeah. is that? You could go I buy know. organic food in that store right now, but why bother? Why bother? Yeah, it's being microwaved right now. And maybe and the microwave radiation is shooting farther away and it's not it doesn't matter. It's wrong. Yeah. I live just two miles away. Right. I've got this thing. I have it here in my, I got it on Amazon a while ago. Yeah. And it's, uh, it reads the radiation uh, oh, coming okay. off. Wow. And um, it's called a Trifield Meter Model 100XE. Anybody can get a screenshot of it if they want to purchase one. And you can use this to see about the radiation in your house. Uh, you can even, if you have a microwave, I have one I don't use, but you can turn the microwave on, say far enough back, and then just see where the radiation, if, where the levels cease. The oh, microwave, wow. a new brand new microwave, when closed, just to turn it on at medium power, and it creates a, you know, a sort of semicircle of the radiation waves coming out. Now I've got cats, and this microwave is close to the floor. People have dogs. It's you know, it's not on a high shelf. It's one of those ones that's in a lower cabinet. If I turned that thing on and was a person who made lots of microwave foods and such, um, and my cats were walking by, they would be getting zapped. If I kept yep. cat food next to that microwave and often used a microwave, the food would become irradiated. Uh, of course, of course, my lower body and genitalia would be getting microwaved. And so right, people everything. say, like, why do I have cancer, et cetera, et cetera? And, you know, I, I eat healthy, I run, um, but there's these invisible causes this might be one of them. And yeah, what you took a photo of and showed us is, is another one of those things that make you go, hmm, as you said earlier. Yeah. And uh, it, it, it not only goes from that, but chemtrails. You know, I don't want chemtrails on my flat earth. I don't want GMOs in Monsanto on my flat earth. I want to be able to go to the store and freely buy, you know, how about this? How about this? I want to go to my store and locally and pick up whatever I want and then leave freely, you know, with no money needed, just even bartering. Hey, what are you doing? Well, I, I like to make blankets. Yeah, it does get pretty cold here in Minnesota during the winter time. So I make blankets. What do you make? Oh, I make strawberries. Well, there's not many strawberries available during the winter time. So you mind if I, you know, get a couple pounds of strawberries from you and I'll make you a couple blankets, you know, but yeah, unfortunately we have, you know, the money system and everything. And, um, it does get to be very overwhelming once you get into this, um, this, you know, conspiracy trail, if you yes. will. It can be depressing and too. It can be depressing. It can be. And it can be very intimidating for a lot of new people that come yeah. into it because they're not familiar with like, Okay, well, what does flat earth have to do with vaccines? You can't just go around screaming, everything's fake, but, yeah, but it is. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> right, yeah. 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 I, I do want to make a correction, and I could have been incorrect about the microwave thing, and I think many people think about microwaves the same way I do, but somebody in the live chat named Greg T says, no, it doesn't. Microwave ovens are pretty suppressed. Microwave leakage isn't happening, that I'm picking up the 60 hertz EMF. Very well, I might be picking that up with my with my uh, trifold meter, but I still think microwaves are bad. So 
uh, I don't want that EMF. I mean, EMFs have been shown to cause cause issues in people. So it might not be radiation per se, um, scrambling the inside of my body and, and my cat's bodies, but it uh, the electromagnetic fields have been shown to be really horrible. Electrical blankets are bad. People put them down for their pets. And I grew up in Michigan. There you are in Minnesota. I mean, electric blankets are pretty popular because it gets cold. Yeah. But uh, you can put it on your bed and warm your bed, but don't lay underneath one. Just don't, don't do it. Right. It's been really lovely talking with you. Hey, you too, Patricia. I really appreciate the opportunity to come on and, and uh, hang out and share. Um, with, with what you said, I, I, I can kind of leave you with this idea and this thought. Um, the heart itself is an electromagnetic pulse. And it does give off waves and it gives off vibrations. And those particular vibrations can be good or they can be evil. They can have proper intent or they can have a negative intent. And I saw a video, I can't remember where exactly it was, um, but I did when I was in Thailand, uh, get to know the new age movement really well. I had, a subscription to David Wilcox um, website at the time. I think it's Gaia or something like that, Gaia. And coincidentally, right, I'm in Thailand and I'm learning about new age stuff. And there was an experiment that two, two scientists had done and they hooked up something to a person's heart and they were able to feel the vibration of the heart from an electronic device. And through that vibration, I feel that it affects those people around you. Like you were saying with the microwave, I mean, there's just this aura of it around. And I feel like if, if you do have the right mindset and your thoughts are water, and if you eat healthy and you take in the proper food and distilled water, and you do think good thoughts towards people and yourself, you are going to permeate those thoughts into action. And people are going to feel that as you continue to go about your business. And the best part about it is people can tell whether you're being genuine or whether you're being fake and an actor. And I suggest people check out uh, why the, uh, what the bleat do we know? Um, it kind of does a really fascinating idea of, of thoughts and water and how you're, what you take in is really what you put out. And I, I, I kind of take that into consideration because there does go, there, there is a lot to talking to people in public and making them understand that why do I have to have a job if I feel so passionate about helping you with something that you have no reason to think that you need help in. And I think that as a community, we all kind of have that. We all want to help in our own little way, but sometimes it takes somebody like you or somebody like me or, you know, Mark Sargent, Eric Dubay, or all these other people creating these, this content to get people to say, wow, I'm pretty good at like video editing. I'm not very good in front of the camera and I don't have a very good voice, but if you hook up with like two or three other people, you guys could probably make a fairly decent YouTube channel together and educate the new people that are coming up because I want to send these people to you guys out there in the community. And I, I want to feel confident about me sending them to your content. Um, and I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. You know, I'll, I'll say, hey, you know, yeah, check out this website or this channel. And, you know, go from there because I talk to people on the front lines. I don't, I don't know where they're going to go. I don't know what kind of, you know, websites they're going to look at or what they're thinking when they walk away and what they're doing behind closed doors. So I just want to be and feel confident to be able to send them to you guys out there. So we all should step up our game is what you're trying yes. to say. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, Minnesota is going to become the state capital of flat earth here pretty soon. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think that that's just fine with me. Yeah. Thank you for coming on. I truly appreciate it. Hey, thank you very much for allowing me to come on. And everybody in the chat, I so much appreciate you and your encouragement. 
And uh, I just can't thank you enough. There's a lot of love in the live chat right now thank for you, so for sure. That's Joshua right. Swift. He is on Facebook. And uh, for those who would like to friend you on Facebook, uh, is it under Joshua Swift? I know it is. It's, but... Yeah, it's under Joshua Swift. And I have like uh, Santi Suk English School, which is the school that I taught in Thailand. So pretty easy to get to. And yeah, I'm, I'm a real boy. So <laughs> Check and also uh, the uh, his channel and information uh, is in the GoFundMe if you want to help him. He, he does actually need a new screen for his phone. I noticed that one was cracked when you held it. Yeah, up. it was a bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so if you want to help so, him out, if you've got an extra $5 rolling around in your couch, that's where you need to put it. Uh -huh. uh, thank you. It's Joshua Swift. And the channel is Authentic Intent. And this concludes episode number 187. Wow, I can't believe it's 187. Uh, no, excuse me. It's not 187. That's how many live viewers uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> are there. I'm yeah. like, what? wait a minute. That was just a Mandela effect. Episode yeah, 176 right. of Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. And until we meet again, keep it flat. <laughs>